nice. A whole gaggle of pale bellied Brent geese. They breed in Arctic Canada and they come here via Iceland to Strangford Lock. And 90% of the pale bellied Brent geese, about 30,000 animals, come here and their numbers peak at the end of this month before they begin to disperse into other parts of Ireland and some of them even down as far as Spain and France. But why do they come here? Why is this particular place such an important staging post for them? Well, it comes down to this stuff over here. <coughs> It doesn't look much to us, I'm sure. Certainly not very palatable. But from the goose's point of view, this stuff, Zostra or eelgrass, is absolutely invaluable. It's packed full of goodness and nutrients. And the thing about Strangford Lock here is that it covers an area of about 150 square kilometers. But when the tide goes out, there's 50 square kilometers of this stuff that's exposed for the geese. A perfect salad. So this is a bit of a Brent goose paradise. Well, many species of birds have a small salt gland situated between their eye and the top of their beak. And here they pump salt from their blood into their nasal mucus. And we know that Brent geese have a salt gland which is four times bigger than many other species of geese. And this allows them to eat all of that super salty eelgrass. So one of the keys to this species' success is salty snot. Nice. to Strangford Lock and to those pale-bellied Brent geese. 30,000 of them, as I showed you earlier, have begun to gather there. That's the number that will peak at the end of the month. And it's terribly easy sometimes, I think, to just, you know, for us to imagine that just because something's common, that we can afford a degree of complacency when it comes to looking after it. But I need to remind you of the house sparrow and the starling. Mm -hmm. It's ever important that we understand about these creatures, so if ever there is a need, we can conserve them. So I was really pleased this week to join up with the Irish Brent Goose Research Project and Stuart Burhop from Exeter University as they they set out to catch some of these geese, something that you'll see wasn't terribly easy. The plan is to set some long nets here, which they're going to fire using rockets over the flock so that we can catch some of these animals and take some valuable biometric measurements and also put some wings on them. And this is all a question of timing. We've been waiting for the tide to go out so that the resource is available for the birds. We're a bit worried about the wind blowing ashore here because that could slow up the net. And these guys have got to be working pretty quickly here as well because if the tide goes out too far, the geese will all be feeding miles out there and not close enough to the net. So it's critical that we get it set, get back to the cars and get ready with our finger on the button. Stuart, they're within a few metres of the yeah, marker stones, yeah. aren't they? So we'll have to wait until they're, I would say, good two, three metres in. You know, those marker stones are the actual outer edge of the net. But they're but, moving fast. Yeah, they're, they're, they're moving up very well. I mean, it's looking really good. I, I, it's, uh, you know, it's looking very promising. It's difficult to see, but there, there, there's definitely... Well, there's two right at the Two far right edge. in the middle there, and then there's a few more beyond them which are probably just on the edge, aren't they? Because there are masses there, Stuart. Yeah. Are we being greedy? I mean, are we being greedy well, waiting for those other birds think, to come in? I think there's one walking back in. <laughs> Armrich. Nigel, do you read over? We're, we're going to fire over. Right, switch net in. Three, two, one, fire. We've got one. Jesus, man. Well, <laughs> we, got, we got one bird just as it started to rain. <laughs> Should we process this animal then? Yeah, we'll go and process it and get it dry, get out of the, the rain, and then we can show you the kinds of things we're doing with them. Perfect. Okay. 
Don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let go of the keys. <laughs> so this is um, this is this is an adult, and you can see it's actually probably molting. It's yeah. growing in some flight. Fit. Oh, sorry, some coverts there. Yeah. They, they, they fly further probably than any other good species. These guys. So you're going to colour wing this then, um, yeah. Stuart? Yeah. I mean, is this to get observations of the birds here at Strangford, or are you collecting them once they leave here? We've actually seen them caught colouring birds in Canada. But the ones that you put the rings on? Yes. That must be quite Spice. satisfying, yeah, really, to go to another part of the world yeah. and handle a bird for a second yeah, time. Yeah, it is. And this is what all of the effort is about, taking the vital statistics of this bird. Bill's 88.1. We'll put it back in the bag. So now we rest the bird, I yeah. guess. We've got the blood, we've got the feather, it's been individually marked, yes. it's been sexed, it's been measured, it's been yes. weighed, it's had the full treatment. Yes, it's had the full treatment. This little makeshift Hessian hut here is a place where the bird's going to be allowed to calm down before it's released. There we go. And how long is it going to stay in here? At least 20 minutes. About 20 minutes. Perfect. Quick cup of tea before we release the goose. Nice. And seeming none the worse for its experience, our goose is off to rejoin the others. And now this isn't just another Brent goose, this is an individual. Off goes H2. And that is the key thing about those colour rings. It's almost like giving the geese a name badge, isn't it? Everybody now knows H2 was that goose that was ringed at Strangford Lock. And Stuart and the guys uh, running this project would love you to help them. So if you are out looking at wildfowl over the next uh, few days and weeks, and I urge you to do it because it is a fantastic spectacle, if you happen to see a pale-bellied Brent with a colour ring, do get in contact with the guys and report it. You you can find out how to do that on our website bbc.co.uk forward slash autumnwatch and uh, they will then report back to you to tell you the history of your particular goose that you've spotted so well worth doing that yeah indeed they've had 67,000 reports of color wings but the more the merrier one other top tip if you can't see it through your binoculars you could always try taking a picture of it if you can and then enhancing the picture on your computer and often you can read the numbers there and h2 has already turned up back at the same spot where uh, he was caught in, 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 in that net. But, you know, Stuart told me a lot of stuff about what they'd learned now. I, I could talk about, all night about it. I'll choose just one thing, and it deals with the fecundity of these animals, their ability to reproduce. And what they found by watching them at Strangford and marking them as individuals is that when a family arrives, they start to eat that eelgrass. But towards the end of the winter, the eelgrass reserves begin to run down, and the young birds can't feed on them efficiently. Mm. So they have to move off onto the pasture fields. Plenty of grass there, but it's not as good quality. But the adult birds that have accompanied them in that family group yeah. then go to the grass fields with the youngsters to look after them so they too end up eating this low quality forage and this means that by the end of the winter when they come to make their journey back to Arctic Canada they're not in such good condition and by the time they've migrated back they're not actually in a fit state to breed so will they miss a, a year's breeding? Exactly. So when they breed, if the eelgrass runs out, as it typically does, it means that they can't breed in the subsequent year. And this has a profound effect, of course, on the population's ability to recover from any deficit, uh, to bounce back or to ever increase. But they've done an amazing amount of work with this project. Lots more to learn, of course, and you can help out by sending in those ringing reports if you possibly can. You absolutely can. But the science aside, it is undeniably a fantastic spectacle as Chris and I witnessed.